Strumming can be really hard. It was really hard for me when I was learning because I had no natural sense of rhythm. And it didn't make sense when I look up strum patterns online because, well, they, they just didn't quite work. In fact, you've probably seen this pattern before, right? Down, down, up, up, down, up. I played it something like this. If I just kind of hold all open with my ukulele, I played down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. And that's not right at all, is it? That's choppy. It doesn't have any sense of tempo or timing. And what really helped me was when I started to look at strumming in a little bit different of a way. When I realized that I have to keep my hand moving down and up. I need this consistent movement to happen even when I don't strike the string. So that down, down, up that we just looked at, let's look at it this way instead for a moment. You see, what now we have are these dotted arrows. And all that the dotted arrows are telling you is to miss the strings as you move your hand. You still move the hand, you just don't strike the strings as you do it. So if I bring my camera down and I play this rhythm now and I say these motions, it looks something like this. It goes down, miss, down, up, miss, up, down, up, down, miss, down, up, miss, up, down, up. But do you see how consistently my hand is moving with this? That's the key to success here. At least it was for me, because when I realized that this hand consistently moves no matter what rhythm I'm playing, I started unlocking a lot of different rhythms. And that's where this gets really interesting. Let's take this down, down, up, up, down, up pattern that is so you know common and it's called the island strum or calypso rhythm, right? Really, really popular pattern. Let's go ahead and mix it up a little bit. Let's, uh, let's take the first beat and let's move it to the last beat. So instead of that being the one, let's make that the, the four. And that looks something like this. So this pattern, well, it sounds something like this. It goes. That's a really cool sound, isn't it? And it's very different despite being essentially the same strum pattern just starting on a different place. But this is also what can make it really challenging and why it's so important to keep your hand moving. Because now when I play this, that missing on the second arrow there, on the second down arrow, well, for me, it was really hard. And it might be for you too, because it feels so unintuitive. So this is where saying the motions and trying to work through them slowly can be really helpful. Let's go and try this together. We're gonna play this rhythm. And if you can't play the rhythm yet, if it's still uncomfortable, just say the motions as I say them, whatever you need to do. And you can even mute your strings and just kind of keep the hand moving to keep time. Anything is better than nothing here. And so that's gonna look and sound something like this. Down, up, miss, up, down, up, Miss, down, up, miss, up, down, up, down, miss, down, up, miss, up, down, up, down, miss. Pretty cool, right? If I put it with some simple chords, just like a C to G7 here, well, it sounds like this. sound. Very different than the one that we just did, our island strum, which sounds like this. But you'll notice my hand, it doesn't change as I switch between these. It keeps that consistent movement because I'm making sure I miss the strings at an equal pace to how I strike them. And you could even go back and forth between them, which could be a little challenging, but it looks and sounds something like this. Pretty cool, right? It feels a little bit like bringing the camera up, like doing this, if that makes sense. You know, kind of rubbing your tummy and patting your head, but it's a great way to start getting comfortable with rhythm. And uh, you know, strum patterns get a bad rap. In this case, you see that I'm mixing up the strum pattern. I'm not locking into just one thing, but I'm using that thing to communicate the rhythm. And what's cool about this is you can take it to a next level by incorporating different techniques. One of my favorite techniques on the ukulele is the chunk, which is this sound here, bring the camera back down. It's the the snare pop sound, right? It's such a common technique. We're gonna break it down a little bit here today, but I like to show what the chunk looks like, something like this for a cymbal. You see how it's just this block with an X through it? And it's always going to be on the down strum. We always do a down chunk, no up chunks allowed. And the reason for that is just because of the mechanics of the technique, which if I super zoom in here, the way we do a chunk, well, it's a little bit different for different people. And it's a bit like riding a bike. What I mean by this is just like riding a bike, you have to practice it full speed because if you try riding a bike slowly, it doesn't work. Same with this technique. You got to try it fast. And when you learn to ride a bike, you're going to fall. 
same thing here. You're going to make some really nasty sounds with your ukulele as you try this technique. Know that that's very normal as you're trying to get the timing correct. And what that timing is, is using some part of the palm, whether you're using the upper part of the thumb here all the way down to even over here, everyone chunks a little differently, but using some part of the palm to mute the strings just before the fingers strike them. And that's the whole technique, is it's a mute followed by a strike. They're nearly simultaneous, but they're not. They're not at the exact same time. We want to make sure that that mute happens just before you strike it. I personally like to chunk with the back of my palm because it gives me a really chunky chunk. But lots of players will use more of the front of their thumb. That's more efficient. So it just depends. Try different things, but it looks and sounds something like this. And the thing to practice is using it with strumming. Like if I want to go chunk followed by an up strum, just with my all open right now, that's how I can start getting that sound. And again, I said it's like riding a bike, and the reason is, is you're going to try this technique, and it's going to sound like this. It's going to sound awful, and that's normal. That's part of the process. You get back up and keep riding. And the last reason it's like riding a bike is because once you get it, you'll never forget it. But using the chunk now, I can play this rhythm here. And this rhythm's pretty cool because this rhythm is taking into consideration what we were playing before. It's just adding a chunk on that third beat. So now instead of going down, up, miss, up, down, up, down, miss, I'm going down, up, miss, up, chunk, up, down, miss. And it sounds something like this, nice and slow. Down, up, miss, up, chunk, up, down, miss. Down, up, miss, up, chunk, up, down, miss. Kind of neat, right? If I play that C and G7 again with it, it sounds something like this. Pretty cool, right? I'm gonna bring the camera back up. These are just some ways that you can use these different elements of rhythms to create your own strum patterns. And this is what my ultimate ukulele strumming course is all about. It's taking all of these different pieces and learning how you can both do the different techniques like chunking. We also work on things called like sweeps, accented strums, ghost notes, muted strums, swing strums, all sorts of different techniques like that and you learn how you can reposition them and create different rhythms with it. One of the elements of the class is that it has lots of examples of rhythms to different genres of music, which is kind of cool because it can help you build your vocabulary. Again, the goal here is not to lock into a strum pattern and do it over and over, but rather to create these strum patterns as vocabulary phrases that are meant to be taken apart and rearranged in different ways, just like we did here with our basic island strum. So if you'd like to check it out, it's linked down below. It's available for purchase and for streaming over my Patreon page. And if you have any questions with it, please leave it down in the comments below. And I'll look forward to seeing you there. Thanks so much. Take it easy. I'll talk to you soon.